When you know you're loved, you're going to begin to dream. You're going to, you're going to come up out of the low level of living that is always trying to find love, and you're going to live in the high level of living, which is dreaming God's dreams and thinking God's thoughts and desiring God's desires and, and, and hoping with God's hopes. And these hopes, these dreams, these desires, these prayers, these thoughts will not be disappointed because the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, God is able. Everybody say, God is able. able. Well, many translations say, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond all that we can ask or think. But the Amplified Bible says that to him who by the action of his will, his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and to do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think. Notice what what he says next, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams, that our God is able to do super abundantly, far over and above. God doesn't just, God doesn't just kick a field goal where the ball just barely gets over the goalpost, God kicks it and it, it clears the stadium. Come on, amen. amen. Far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers. Everybody say infinitely beyond, infinitely beyond. our highest prayers, prayers. desires, prayers. thoughts, prayers. hopes, and dreams. Whoa, it's bigger than you think. God's plan for you is bigger than you think. It's bigger. It's greater. It's God's idea to give you dreams. It's God's idea to give you hope. It's God's idea to give you desires, high desires, so high that the highest you can desire something, God wants to do even greater. The highest you can think, God wants to do even greater. The highest you can pray, God wants to do even greater. The highest you can hope, God wants to do even greater. And the highest you can dream, God wants to do even greater. How does he do it? Verse 21, look at what he says, to him be the glory. Well, if you go back to verse, um, actually back to verse 18 and 19, he says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 18, that you may have the power to be strong, apprehend and grasp what with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love and what is the breadth and length and height and depth of it. Verse 19, to know the love of Christ, to experience it for yourselves, the Amplified Bible says, to know the love of Christ, to experience his love. What kind of love? A love that surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being unto the fullness of God, and that the riches may may have the richest measure of the divine ability of God. And that's when he says in verse 20 that that he is able to do exceeding abundantly. Why is he able to do infinitely beyond your highest desires, your highest prayers, your highest thoughts, your highest hopes, and your highest dreams? Because of the love of God. When you understand the breadth and length and height and depth of God's love, that's what gives birth, that's what gives birth to hopes, dreams, desires, prayers, and thoughts that are beyond your wildest imagination, infinitely beyond, he says, amen? Amen. Infinitely beyond. Say that, God wants to do infinitely beyond my highest highest thoughts, thoughts, prayers, prayers, desires, hopes, and dreams. 
How does he do that? He does that according to the power that is within you. And what is that power? It is Holy Spirit power. And what does the Holy Spirit bring before he brings anything before he brings tongues, which he brings? before he brings interpretations, which he brings, before he brings healing, which he brings, before he brings words of wisdom and words of knowledge, which he brings, he brings something else. Look at Romans chapter five, verse five in the New King James translation, Romans chapter five, verse five. Notice what he says. And hope does not disappoint. Hope does not disappoint. Look, people disappoint. We disappoint ourselves. How many have disappointed yourself in your life from mistakes you've made? Three of us, the rest of us are so disappointed ourselves, we can't even lift our hand, right? (laughs) We're so burdened sometimes by disappointment. People have disappointed us. We've disappointed ourselves. Life has disappointed us. Our bodies have disappointed us. Our willpower has disappointed us. How many have made the decision you're going to pray every day and then you 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 fail? You're going to, you know, fast, you're going to diet, you're going to get in shape and you blow it and you fail and you stop making all these promises. Look, we disappoint ourselves at times. Life disappoints us. People disappoint us. But hope never disappoints. What kind of hope? The hope that comes from knowing No matter what I'm going through, God loves me too much to let me fail. God loves me too much to leave me in the condition that he found me. He loves me too much to let me stay the same. God loves me the way that I am. But remember, as we've been talking about, God doesn't leave us. He doesn't leave me the way that I am. He loves me the way that I am, so I don't have to perform for his love, but he doesn't leave me the way that I am. When I know he loves me, he changes me. God uses his love to change us. He doesn't change us by demand. He changes us by love. Romans 2, 4 said it is the loving kindness of God that leads us to repentance. It leads the way to change. It leads the way to us turning from sin, wrong thinking, wrong believing, wrong behaving. Love changes us. Love turns us around. God's love for us, not human love, which is limited, but divine love, which is unlimited. In Romans five, verse five, hope does not disappoint. Look at what he says, because the love of God. Why does hope not disappoint? Because of the love of God, the love of God, not 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 people's love, but God's love. Look, (laughs) you're going to be disappointed with people's love sometimes. People's love is going to disappoint you sometime. People are going to let you down sometime. Help me now. Am I in the right church? He said, but but hope will never disappoint. Your dreams, your hopes, your desires, your prayers, you, they will not disappoint because the love of God has been poured. What has it been? Poured, poured out, poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, there's something to be said about the Holy Spirit here. The Holy Spirit has been given to us. The Holy notice what it doesn't say. The Holy Spirit that was traded to us for something else or the Holy Spirit that was sold to us through our payment. No, the Holy Spirit was what? Given Given to us. This is a gift. The Holy Spirit is a gift. You can't earn the Holy Spirit. You can't obey enough to receive the Holy Spirit. Well, you 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 obey faith, you faith, you 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 obey what the Bible says to believe God's word. Believing God's word is true obedience, because if you because what you believe will lead to how you live. Right. Believing will produce right living. Right. Thinking will produce right living. But he says the Holy Spirit was given to us. You, You can't make enough promises to God for the Holy Spirit to give. He said, Jesus said, remember in Acts one, verse four, wait for what the father has promised. 
which you heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized not many days from now. So what is he saying? He's saying, man, wait, don't go anywhere. Wait right where you are, because the Father, look at verse 4, he says, wait for what the Father Wait for the promise of the Father, the promise of the Father. It's not the promise of the children to the Father, it's the promise of the Father to the children. The Father is the one that makes the promises. We are the recipients of the promises, amen? Which he said, wait for the promise of the Father. This is not uh, the trading of the Father. This is not an offer of the Father that if you do this, he'll do this. This is a promise that he makes. All you have to do, he told his disciples, is wait, wait for the promise. He said he's going to do it. You heard of from me, John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. You're going to receive power. You're going to have the power to see your highest hopes, your highest prayers, your highest dreams, your highest desires, your highest thoughts fulfilled, and infinitely beyond. That's the kind of power the Holy Spirit gives. And go back to Romans chapter, Romans chapter 5, verse 5. What, what is this power? It is the hope will not disappoint because the love of God has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The love of God has been what? Say it again. Poured. 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 I love this word. I like like that he doesn't say the Holy Spirit has been sprinkled (laughs) in our hearts. The Holy Spirit has sent a mist in our hearts. The Holy Spirit has given a little bit of a dew on the ground of our hearts. No, he says the Holy Spirit poured. Now, I don't know about you, but I understand a thing or two about the difference between a sprinkling of May showers and when it's pouring. I mean, when it's pouring, when it sprinkles, you kind of got to move around to really get wet, and you, you kind of got to stay there for a real long time to get wet, right? But when it pours, you walk out of your house, you get out of your car, and instantly you are drenched in water. How many have ever been in a pour, in a pouring rain? This is what he, this is the kind of love he's talking about. He says, this love is pouring and pouring, and it it drenches you completely the moment that you receive it, the moment you receive the Holy Spirit, the the love of God is poured. You know how, you know, when it's pouring and you hear on your roof, or you're driving in the car, and you're, you're, you got your, you got your, your windshield wipers like on the fastest speed, and you still can't see, it is pouring, man. This is the kind of love we're talking about. This is the kind of love God has for us. This is the kind of love that gives you the power. It gives you the power. And let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what I mean by that. Look at Genesis 37, verse 2, or excuse me, verse 3. Genesis 37, verse 3. Now, Jacob is the father of 12 12 sons, right? And Jacob's name, Israel, is interchangeable with the name Jacob. So he's, he's talking about Jacob here, the son of Isaac. Now, Jacob loved Joseph more than all his children. Jacob loved Joseph. Now, here is our introduction of Jacob's relationship with his son Joseph. And here is an Old Testament picture of New Testament love. That Jacob loved Joseph equals your heavenly father loves you more than anything. Jacob loved Joseph more than all his children equals God loves you more than anything. Say that. God loves me. My heavenly father loves me more than anything. Now watch, this is what produces the highest level of living, the highest level of, of thinking, the highest level of, of desire, the highest level of hopes, the highest level of dreams. And hope does not disappoint. Why? Because of the love of God. Now God gives Joseph, 
excuse me, Jacob gives Joseph, he, he loves him more than anything, but he doesn't love him empty-handed, does he? He doesn't love him with just feeling he loves him so much that he gives to him something. He made him a coat of many colors. Jacob loves Joseph and gives him a coat. Now, the coat represents righteousness and authority. Because God loves us, he gives us this coat. So the father loves Joseph and then gives him this coat. Two things God gives when he loves. He gives a coat. That's the first thing. And the coat represents righteousness and authority and many other things, many colors. But those are the two primary ones. So the coat he gives, he gives because he loves. Does he, does he give him a coat and then say, oh, because you put the coat on, now I love you? No. He loves him first and then gives him the coat. Yes. And then the second thing that he gives him, which really is like it's now he's talking about his heavenly father giving him this. Verse five, what happens to Joseph after God, after the father loves him, he gives him a coat. But because the father loves him, he gives him a dream. Now, Joseph had a dream. Joseph had a dream. Now, this dream came from his heavenly father. The coat came from his earthly father. The dream came from his heavenly father. For us in Christ, the coat comes from our heavenly father and the dream comes from our heavenly father. Are you with me still? And he said, and Joseph dreamed a dream. In other words, Joseph is no longer living his life at this low level. Because he knows he's loved, his coat elevates him to live life at a higher level. And, and this love elevates him to begin to dream God's dreams, to begin to dream about things that are bigger than himself. It's bigger, folks. God's plan for you, God's purpose for you, God's dream for you is so much bigger than you can possibly imagine. That's why when you know you're loved, you're going to begin to dream you're going you're gonna to come up out of the low level of living that is always trying to find love, and you're going to live in the high level of living, which is dreaming God's dreams and thinking God's thoughts and desiring God's desires and, and, and hoping with God's hopes. And these hopes, these dreams, these desires, these prayers, these thoughts will not be disappointed because the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the reason why these hopes are not going to fall to the ground and die. The reason these prayers are not going to hit the ceiling and fall down. The reason these dreams are not going to just be in your imagination and never come to pass. No, these dreams, these hopes will not be disappointed. Why? Because the love of God has been poured <laughs> poured, drenched on you, soaking everything Amen. in your life through the Holy Spirit who was given to you, which is another act of love. He, he loved you, so he gave his son. Then he loved you, so he gave you his spirit. And, and he was like, man, what am I going to do now? I got to give him something else. I don't want to just stop there. So he gives us his word. He's like, man, I love him so much. I'm giving him my, I gave him my son. I love him so much. I want to give him my spirit now. I, I love him so much. I'm giving him my word. I, I love him so much. I'm giving him a destiny. I love you so much. I'm giving you a calling. I'm giving you a purpose. I'm giving you my gifts. I'm giving you my anointing. I'm giving you my spirit. I'm giving you my words. I'm giving you my weapons. I'm giving you everything I got. You start seeing God that way. You start seeing God that way and seeing love that way, you will be an unstoppable force in this earth. Everything you're about to go through, you're going to make it through when you realize the Father's love for you. Everything. God always loves you first before the trial hits so that you have so that the love is what powers you through the trial, what powers you through the temptation, what powers you through the demotion. Amen. Yes. Jacob loved Joseph 
and gave him a coat. God loved Joseph and gave him a dream. God loves you and gives you a coat. God loves you and gives you a dream. And then the next thing that happens two chapters later is now Joseph was taken down. He was taken down. He was taken down. Sometimes life takes you down. Sometimes life takes you down. But you see, two chapters earlier, God prepared you for what was about to happen to you two chapters later when you're taken down. Joseph was taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there, verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. Therefore, he was a successful man, even in the house of his master, the Egyptian. The Lord was with him. The Holy Spirit is with us. The Holy Spirit is in us. The love of God is in us, poured into us. And therefore, even when we're taken down, we become successful. Even when we're put in the pit, we become successful. Even when we're put in prison, we end up in the palace because of love, because of love. Well, it's so true. The most powerful words on earth, Father, I thank you, Father, I thank you. You know, if you're joining me today and you haven't believed the promise of salvation yet, if you have not received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, before I go any further, let me pray with you right where you are. And you know what? It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're about to do. It's all about to change. Would you just pray this with me? If you're not sure you're going to heaven, you can be sure right now just by saying this, Jesus, I believe you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. Heavenly Father, I receive the grace, the gift of salvation through the blood of Jesus. My faith and my trust is in you from this moment forward. Amen. You know, it really is that simple. Jesus did the hard part. All we simply do is receive the free gift of salvation. If you prayed along with me, you are now a child of God. Welcome home and welcome to the family. And I really want to invite you to email me at the address on your screen and I'll send you my free book called The Power of a New Life to take you through the next steps of your victorious walk with God. And today I've been talking about how gratitude changes it all and how thankfulness is the gateway to the most important things we all need in our lives, our happiness, the miraculous, and our purpose. You see, when we remember what God has done for us, it causes us to be thankful. David said, forget none of his benefits. And then he says he satisfies us with good things. In other words, when we realize all the good things he has done for us, we are satisfied. Jeremiah went on to say, happy is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. You see, happiness is God's idea. And thankfulness is also the gateway to happiness and it's a gateway to the miraculous. When Jesus took the loaves, he gave thanks. And what's the next thing that happened? There was a miraculous multiplication. That's the power of thanks. And then, of course, thankfulness is a gateway to our purpose. This is the will of God in everything. Give thanks. Thanks launches us into our God given purpose and his will for our lives. Now, before I finish today, I want you to know something and I want you to be a part of something really special. I'm on a mission to see 30 million souls saved and lives transformed. And I need your help today. Really, it's pretty urgent because we want to reach 30,000 people in Haiti. It'll take us $50,000 because we're going to be sending several thousand solar powered audio Bibles to people that can't read. And I'm believing God for many of you right now to recognize the urgency of this need. I'm believing God that you and I can stand together. And I want to ask you to stand with me in this project today with a special gift today of two hundred and fifty dollars or more. If that's you, if that's on your heart, if the Holy Spirit puts it on your heart or if your heart moves you generously to do that, I want you to not hesitate. Pick up the phone right now. Call the number on your screen or go to Gregory The blessings of God's goodness will always meet you at the place of faith. Step out with me and let's reach this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you support this cause, I want to personally thank you by sending you a few powerful messages along the lines of what I taught you today to build your faith, to see the goodness of God explode in your life, including today's teaching in its entirety. Here's my announcer to tell you more. 
and I'll be right back. With your timely gift today of $25 or more, 10 precious people will have a chance to hear the gospel in their native language. With your generous gift of $50 or more, 20 will have a chance to hear the gospel in their native language. With an extraordinary gift of $250 or more, 100 will have a chance to hear the gospel in their native language. As a special thank you for your support, Gregory Dickow wants to send you his teaching, Jesus is with you now, letting go of a small God, which includes today's teaching in its entirety for your timely gift of $25. Ask for offer 728A. Or for your very generous gift of $50 or more, he will include his teaching entitled, Dreaming God's Dreams, and his book, So Loved. Ask for offer 728B. With an extraordinary gift of $250 or more, we want to send you your very own solar-powered audio Bible as a reminder of your support. Plus, if you call today, we will include Gregory Dickow's anointed message, How to Experience God's Best for Your Life, and the book, The Power to Change Today, signed by Pastor Dickow. Ask for offer 728C. Gregory Dickow needs to hear from you today. Live operators are standing by to take your call, or you can go online right now to gregorydickow.tv. Well, I want to encourage you and ask for the Holy Spirit to inspire you to do something in the next few moments that will matter for eternity. You see, our Christianity is expressed as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people around the world, but especially with those who have been persecuted, those that are helpless, forgotten, minimized. Jesus said, whatever you've done to the least of these, you've done it unto me. That's why I need your urgent help today. Your gift makes it possible for me to get these powerful audio Bibles, these solar powered Bibles into the hands of precious people who have been forgotten, people that are blind, people that can't read, people in third world countries. By getting this into their hands, they can hear the whole Bible. They can hear the plan of salvation and our greatest teachings that we do in this ministry that I know will change people's lives. So I encourage you to do that. And don't forget to connect with me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. I'm there. I'll do my very best to personally respond to each and every one of you that reaches out. So listen, don't miss our next broadcast. Remember to set your DVR so you never have to miss one of them. I can't wait to see you then. God bless.